Hi friends and welcome back to my channel and today's video. So the Swedish sentence of the day is today I'm gonna record a video and that is in Swedish idag ska jag filma en video. Idag ska jag filma en video. Idag ska jag filma en video. Today I'm gonna rank all of my ABH palettes. I have done a couple of these videos in the past where I ranked all of my Juvia's Please palettes and then all of my Colourpop palettes. And now we're gonna do ABH. I think I'm gonna do Blush Tribe, maybe Morphe or what else? But today anyway, I'm gonna rank ABH. And as you guys know, this is not serious. Uh, we change our mind all the time and I definitely had a hard time as always picking out my number one favorite I would like to have two favorites, but I had to pick one. So that's what I'm gonna do So yeah, we're gonna hop into this video But first and foremost, I did want to say that yes I did record this look if you are interested in seeing it. I did film the eyes only for YouTube and then the face part for Instagram. So you can go ahead and check out there. If it's not up, it's coming. So I have six of the ABH palettes and I don't have Sultry, Soft Glam, the new Alyssa Edwards palette. So those three are the ones that are a little bit newer that I don't have in my collection because they don't really fit my makeup style. But I do have some other ones and I am going to, going to rank actually a seventh palette because I just decluttered it so I don't have it in my collection anymore but I did have it and I never used it and that is the ABH self-made palette. All of the palettes are from ABH, sorry. Uh, I'm gonna look at my phone just so I can see what it looks like but I remember seeing this online and I really really wanted to purchase it so I did but getting it it was a bit underwhelming to say the least. I'm gonna pop out a picture right here so you can see what it looks like with the black packaging and what they kind of made it look like it was gonna look like and then kind of when you see it with the beige background you're like oh it's not that interesting anymore. These are how the shades looked in real life but then also there wasn't a lot of mattes in the palette. There was a lot of shimmers but then also a lot of satins actually. So every time I picked the palette up to do something I didn't know what to do so I kind of just put it da down again. Never wanted to use it and that's why I don't have it in my collection anymore. So in sixth place I have the ABH Shadow Couture palette. This is even older than this self-made palette but I remember so sorry okay I don't really know where I was because I was taking care of my lonely child my dog Sigi and um, I bought this um, at the same time as I bought the self-made palette and I like this palette way more I have dipped into it a couple of times but I will say this is not a palette that I use often this is a palette that I mostly keep for sentimental value, but this is, in my personal opinion, a better color scheme and it is a little bit better because it has a, a great mix of mattes and shimmers. So you have a lot of warm tones, but then you have a pop of gold that I don't personally adore. You have the shade Cheek or Chic. You have this beautiful blue shade. This is a little bit of a neutral palette with a pop of that extra sass, you know? So I think that it's a pretty palette, but it's not my favorite from ABH. And as I said, I rarely use it. So that's why it's coming in sixth place. So fifth place we have the Prism palette. This was a limited edition palette but it was out for a very very long time. Like you could get your hands on this so so long. So this is a palette that kind of just recently was taken off the shelves but you can still buy dupes and such if you really really wanted this palette. This is what my palette looks like and I think that it's a pretty cool palette but what I don't really love about it is the variation of or the different, it's different shimmers in this than they usually have. So this shade Pyramid and Dimension is their usual shimmers. They are really good, but these Throne and Osiris, Osiris, I have a hard time um, pronouncing that, but they are stiff. They're pretty stiff actually, and they are not as magical as I really wanted them to be. But then it is a pretty cool color scheme, but it's still for me a little bit hard to create something something because I usually get this warm crease and then something else on the lid and that can be nice sometimes but it's just not a palette that I reach for 
super often. But you can do Koto looks because you do have lore and you have dimension and then you have this beautiful shade. So you do have a little bit of different variations. But I just have to say that I love this gold pyramid. I don't know what it is, but every time I'm gonna do something gold on my lid, I did this purple and uh, gold look. I'll put a picture up here. That gold I loved. But usually I don't like to have golds on my lids, but this gold is really nice. This shade Spear isn't as intense as I would have liked it to be. It's very sheer. Then I have my beloved Modern Renaissance palette. This is probably the palette that looks the most used in my collection. This is what it looks like, but it hasn't really gotten extra dips in it. I know so many people that says, Mm, I'm not as obsessed about the modern renaissance as everyone is. Not a lot of people are still obsessed with this palette, but it was revolutionary when it came out. Not saying that it is that today because there's a bunch of palettes that looks like this, but when it did come out, it was really, really revolutionary and everyone loved it. And so did I, as you can probably tell. I have used this so many times and this was the only palette that I used for months, I think. So when I actually bought this, I wasn't the kind of person that bought new eyeshadow palettes every single week. Believe it or not, but I wasn't that kind of person. But now, you know, I've gathered a much bigger collection, so I don't really use my palettes as I did back then, which is a shame actually, but it is still a very, very good palette and I do really like it, but it's not a favorite anymore, but it was a favorite for a very long time. On fourth place, I will put my Riviera palette. On third place, actually. So on third place, my Riviera palette comes. This is beautiful. This is colorful, but it's it's still like you can do some neutral looks, looks as neutral looks as well. I have seen some people use Cabana. Is it called Cabana? Yes, Cabana, and then Inheritance, and just do a pre pretty pretty gold look, which you can do. I like this palette. Some people love this palette, and some people didn't. But I love and adore this palette. The purple in this palette isn't my absolute favorite, but I can use it, and I like it. I see myself reaching for this palette because of the shimmers, especially Palomero. I know it looks pretty basic, but if you look at it in person and if you can go to a store and swatch it, you'll see the majesty of it. It's absolutely beautiful and I absolutely adore using that with the shade Palm. Just taking the brown and smoke all over your eyes and then take Palomero or do like a halo eye, I mean, and then take Palomero on your lids Oh my god, so beautiful. I've done that look so many times. It's absolutely beautiful. But you will get a lot of pinks and purple looks with this, which I personally really uh, love. Some of the shimmers are very, very crumbly, which is a shame, actually. I would use a glitter glue and spray my brush and tap my brush off before I apply it. Because if you don't do that, then during the day, if you, for instance, wear false lashes, or if you if you don't wear false lashes, if you just have natural lashes and mascara on them, on them, you will see that the shadow, like the glitter shadow or the shimmer shadow, has come like all over here, and that's not a pretty look, in my personal opinion. I don't like that. That is one of my pet peeves. So just use those steps, and you'll be fine. Okay, guys, top two. Top two, and this was a hard one. I did struggle a lot, but I have to take in second place my subculture palette. <sighs> I adore this palette. I wouldn't say that it's an unpopular opinion to love this palette nowadays, because I feel like when it came out, a lot of people hated it, I loved it, but now I feel like a lot of people actually do like it. But I will say that this is not a beginner palette because there is a lot of pigments in this. But then also, if you don't know your color theory, you're not gonna be able to get this to work because you can see that this is kind of jumbled up. And if you try and blend Axis with Alex All Star, I mean, sorry. If you try to blend those or even Untamed and All Star, it will muddy up and it will not look good. So you have to be able to know when you can blend certain shades together. Like you cannot blend a purple with a yellow, for instance. It's gonna muddy up. So 
just know that that is gonna happen but my favorite 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 look that I have done I think that that is the look that I've done most times that I've a look that I've gone back to is to take a lot of the grungier looks like Untamed Destiny and so on in my crease and then axis all over my lid and then take the shade electric to just top it off I have done that look so many times and then I've seen some of you guys actually recreate it and it's so fun it's so because it's so beautiful I absolutely adore it I love it I love how they transform each other and I think that there's only two shades in this palette that I don't like which is adorn it's not my typical color and then mercury Grays are not my cup of tea. So if you are known to my channel, you already know which my top favorite is, but it's the Norvina palette. I did not purchase this when this came out, actually. I was over the moon when I saw the pictures on Trend Mood, but then I was like, you know what? It's actually not that purple. And I don't really get it because everyone that talks about this palette says that this is not a purple palette. Well, they never claimed that it was a purple palette. The packaging is purple, yes. But if we take a look at the Riviera palette, for instance, this is sort of this boat team, team theme. And you think that this will contain some blues, like really, really strong maroon blues. Maroon, no, um, marine blues, but it doesn't. And we don't complain about that. But when it comes to the Norvina palette, we complain that there isn't a lot of um, matte purples in it, which is a little bit fun, but I get it. It's... It would definitely be a beautiful palette with the um, a matte purple in it. But I did purchase this along the same time as Riviera came out, so I haven't had it that long. But I cannot put this palette down. I think that I will have so many dips in this palette when this year is finished, actually. You can see that I have some dips, but it is hard to see on camera. I love this, especially for my day-to-day -day life because I love purples and I love shades like this. And the shimmers are definitely my cup of tea, like Celestial, Wild Child, and a Dreamer. Those are kind of the, my go-tos. I have even tried dazzling a couple of times and I, I actually like it. There's something so easy and majestic about this palette that I adore and love. The shade Love sold. Just, I would purchase this palette all over again just for the shade Love. The same way I would purchase the Subculture palette again for Axis and Electric because those two together are majestic and they need to come out as singles because I don't want to repurchase the entire palette if I run out of it. So they need to come out with that. But anyway, this is just one of my dream palettes when it comes to my day-to-day -day life. You cannot get that intense looks or like super colorful looks because a lot of the shades in this palette is muted but I adore it and I've done so many beautiful looks with it and I love my looks every single time I use it. As I said, I only used this in the Natasha Denona gold palette for months and months and months. I think I've mentioned this just in passing in a lot of my favorites videos. I think it four months, three months. I've never used a palette this much. Like I, I really, really mean it that I have a hard time putting it down. I recently started Shop My Stash so I won't use the same two palettes all the time for my day-to-day -day time. So I'll actually rotate through my collection a little bit more, which is a really good thing for me, I think. So yeah, I'm happy about that. But that was my little ranking my palettes. So yeah, let me know if you would like me to rank Morphe next or blush tribe. I'll put a little poll right up here so you can go ahead and vote. But yeah, that was all for me today. I hope that you liked this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, please give me a thumbs down. Don't forget that you can subscribe to me if you want to, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.